for some fucking shit right now. Ape. That's right. Ape. Now, there's, there's no way that I'm going to even try and incorporate recording the sound effects from this film because they are just fucking bottom of the rung shit ladder garbage. This film is like cerebral palsy running through your whole body and you just you're just stuck there in a timeless void suffering over and over again and drowning in a, a puddle of your own filth that you've made because you can't move. I, I would assume you would feel like you've just fallen off a horse and become paralyzed and and you just you don't you can't get up. You wanna get up but you can't. That is what watching ape is like. The, the, the film revolves around the plot that a giant ape has been knocked out and uh, he's on a boat being transferred to Disneyland or some shit. Uh, they never really explained where this ape is from or how it got to be so huge or whatever. It came out around the same time as the remake of King Kong in the 70s. So you can imagine it's just another fucking idiot in a ape costume picking apart one of the classics of our you know, film generation, or any generation, but my god, this film is horrible. Their characters, I, I can't even be bothered to remember their names. There's the reporter, there's the actress, there's the colonel, and there's a bunch of Korean farmers who, by some god-awful reason, run towards the ape every time he attacks. Well, uh, ape doesn't stay knocked out for very long, and, um, as, you know, to quote the black man on the ship who simply is one of the greatest actors I've ever witnessed in my life next to George Clooney and Batman and Robin and whoever Arthur Frayne is. That's who I'm always going to remember as anyway. Arthur Frayne. Anyway. He says, oh shit. And that is the only reaction you can get to this film. I witnessed this film with Sarah, Logan, and Arlene. Logan's girlfriend and we I don't think anyone can sum up how terrible this film is to watch with a group because you're so disjointed you're so startled and you're so puzzled but you're laughing anyway it's like being on who wants to be a millionaire and being a deaf blind mute or let's say you wanted to be an adventurer or or you're just Percy Bysshe Shelley going out for a fucking boat ride when you don't know how to fucking swim and getting sunk in the fucking ocean during a storm. Real fucking smart. Anyway, I, I can't sum up how terrible this movie is in words, so I'm just gonna relay more of the plot to you, because the other reviews, I really skimpily talked about the plot. Anyway, Ape gets free. For some reason, the ship explodes when he gets out of the cargo hold, which doesn't make sense. He attacks a fucking shark which is a dead basking shark that's just been swimming around in the water. The thing doesn't even, you know, really approach him. For some reason, on the movie poster, they make it look all epic, and the actual confrontation is the shark being swung around by a guy in an ape suit, and then the fucking shark is ripped in half, as if the torture of being in this film was not enough for the producers and the director. They had the sick mind of putting this poor shark to be ripped apart by this fuck in this ape suit, who then goes to blow up a factory. And from that, we transition to the reporter in a fucking airport, and he meets the actress, and all this shit ensues, and then they find out Ape is attacking villages, the colonel's always on about how he wants to do this or that, and always using goddamn for every sentence. I think he's the most enjoyable character in this film next to Ape himself. I mean, because there's, don't get me wrong. Seeing Korean farmers being smushed to death by a giant ape is enthusing, and it's it's just beautiful. But the colonel's acting, where he just wants his goddamn cigarettes, you just you you start to feel for the character, and you can see the emotions conveyed through his anger, and that is the only thing that you can feel for this film besides revolt and disgust. But it's it's equally enjoyable because of those things. So it's it's a double-edged blade, and. I personally, I, I will never see a film like this again. I know I say that a lot, but I will never see a film like this again. And that's why Ape was the first topic I started. As soon as Logan had given me the idea 
and this this is all his brainchild. I'm just a reviewer and a co-owner, but I made the cult, so therefore, by converse association, I am the owner. Anyway, this film fucking inspired what you have before you today, so you should all have a moment of silence to thank this film. I can't fathom where we'd be without your support, guys, so thank you. We would probably be on MySpace inviting people to read our review of The Pacifier, which would contain fuck, shit, garbage, Vin Diesel is a faggot, and all sorts of fun stuff. Not that we hate gays. I mean, we love gays. Logan liked milk. I, I liked Mrs. Doubtfire. You can call that gay. Dressing up as a woman is pretty gay. I would know. I used to be one. Anyway, uh, this this film, Back to Ape, we just... I... I I can't, I, I want to so badly take you by the hand and walk you through this film, all of you listening in. I just want to, to hold your hand and walk around with you while we witness this. I mean, Sarah was in tears. She was laughing so hard. I, I can't, I can't blame her because, oh my God, was I in tears as well. I, I just. I can't imagine another film like this ever being made. It's definitely one of its own kind, and because of its sick nature, we run into what I would consider it to be a, a classic more so than King Kong, because this is a classic that can't be imitated. I mean, sure, there was Queen Kong, which Logan linked me to, but it's definitely nothing like <laughs> Ape, which is an unintentional parody of the genre. I mean, this director is a sick fuck. Sick fuck. I mean, seriously. I think to to add character and texture to this review, we're going to continue in an English accent. So, henceforth, once that, you know, has happened and he's on the island of Korea for some reason unexplained to us, he goes around and smushes things and then they send in artillery to get him and you, you sort of see rape scenes. The actress is in a film where she's constantly being raped and the director is telling it to happen gentler. Uh, after, you know, just ignoring that factor, we have the rest of the film, which we so enthusiastically enjoy. Uh, I find it to be a sick pleasure. I don't really have any gripes with the plot. That's not the problem. It's the poorly conceived acting. It's the poorly conceived set design. It's the poorly conceived gorilla suit. I mean, at times, there's a fucking time where the gorilla flips the people off. I mean... Where did Ape learn to do that? Where? What is the backstory behind it? It's like the Dark Knight. You want to know where the Joker is from? And you really don't learn that. You don't learn it. And it bugs you and, and it gets at you. And it just eats you up inside. But otherwise, you know, I, if I had to give this film a rating, I would give it five giant apes rampaging through a small Asian country out of five. I'm aware Korea isn't small, but it was the first thing that came to mind. I mean, if you would like to correct me on that, do so in the comment area of this topic. So I could go and pretend to edit this and put that in and make you feel as if you were worth something, which clearly, if you're in this cult, you really aren't. So hopefully you and I have found that balance there. Um, but back to being an American, I really, I, I can't, you know, I, I thank badmovies.org for recommending this, but at the same time, I want to hate them for recommending this, because this is a scar on my psyche that is not easily removed. I, I will probably have to go back in time one day and smack myself to prevent myself from watching this but otherwise as I said five giant apes rampaging through Korea out of five thank you